Resorting to Danger is the second and final Nancy Drew dossier game. I think it's better than the first one. I like to think the third one would have been even better, to the point where the series would stand on its own. Instead, it's just a short-lived spin-off series that most fans ignore. I like the music and location of the game better than the first one. It's a colorful spa called the Redondo. I think that's a better fit for Nancy Drew than the dark Hollywood noir of the first game. Nancy's been hired to investigate a series of bombings. Luckily, George knows a lot about bombs. She's built a bomb detector. I'm not sure if I should be worried for George or not. Bess is happy the bomb detector fits inside a purse. I like seeing Bess and George in the opening scene. I kind of like the hand-drawn animation style. I would have been okay with it if they did that kind of animation for the entire game. We'd probably get a lot more animations that way. Like many other people, I was not a big fan of the character interactions in the first game. Only 5% of the conversations were animated at most. It looks bad compared to the main Nancy Drew series, which animates 100% of the conversations. And most of the characters' bodies get cut off. They're tiny, too. So you see their full-size picture, and then they shrink to quarter size, and then it just rotates between five different facial expressions. So that's a bummer, and disappointingly, the second game made no changes to the conversation system. No, it's still pretty bad. They did improve the buttons at the bottom of the screen. That's probably the biggest improvement they made. It addresses a lot of my problems with that first game. Now we've got a hint button that cuts down on pixel hunting. Nancy's now got an inventory, which holds two items. It's not really used for too much, besides for holding papers with puzzle instructions, so you can reread the puzzle instructions, but I am glad the inventory's there. The four action icons are more specific and more useful. The previous game had generic stuff, like touch something and look at something. This this one has seven different things. Press, pull, turn, flip, lift, shake, scratch. So we've got seven actions and two inventory slots. It's like we're playing a 1980s adventure game. While I'm talking about the bottom of the screen, the goal bar is still pretty useless, as is the journal. The menu bar is way longer than it needs to be, so I would get rid of all those things and replace them with four more inventory slots. That way, this could be an inventory-based game, like most casual adventure games are. They wanted to do a casual Nancy Drew adventure game. Why didn't they make it more like a casual adventure game? Instead of doing bubble matches, you still have to do the bubble matches in this game. You match the flowers with the vase, that puts the flowers in the vase. Match papers on the file to put them in the file. It's just kind of weird. It would make more sense if it was inventory based where you take the flowers from your inventory and put them on the vase. That's what casual adventure fans are used to. That's what normal Nancy Drew game fans are used to. I think the game would have been better if it went with the normal stuff instead of bubbles. Nancy talks to the receptionist, Cassidy Jones. He's laid back and sarcastic and easily my favorite character of the game. The others are unpleasant people who I wouldn't want to talk to in real life. Cassidy seems like he's the only one who would actually bother to help Nancy if she was injured in a bomb explosion. Nancy is given two simple chores to do. Use the feather duster on the lamps and put the two boxes on the correct shelves. And use the glass cleaner on the harmonica case. Nancy notices papers in the harmonica. She has to use two action icons to get them. The papers are from Hippocrates' Bell. You know what? Let me go back to complaining. I'm sorry. I'm going to do a lot of complaining. I do like this game, but there's a lot to complain about. They could have gotten rid of the action icons completely. I don't think anybody would mind if it was just completely inventory-based, no action icons. Sorry to interrupt. Let me go back to what I was saying. So the papers in the harmonica are from Hippocrates' Bell. He's the guy who used to own the spa, and he built a bunch of complicated puzzles everywhere, because why not? That's it for chapter number one. I'm not sure if dividing the game up into chapters was a good idea. I think it works fine. 
On the other hand, that's not what typical casual adventure games do, and it just seems kind of weird. I don't know, it seems odd for the genre, and especially seems odd when you get these super short chapters that are just one minute long. Well, chapter two starts with Nancy meeting Nick Blesky, the mean manager. This brings us to the conversation challenge. You have to pick the right dialogue option from a list. This is unchanged from the first game. It's a decent enough puzzle, but I still wish we could have real conversations with the characters. I would love to talk to them about other things instead of just seeing these forced conversations. Mr. Blesky says Nancy looks like a general assistant, which means she has to do everyone else's chores, no questions asked. Are you serious, Nick? You would rather have Nancy do pointless chores than stop the bombs? Nick orders Nancy to keep the bombs a secret. Construction accident is his code for bombs, while folding towels is code for a bomb threat. Whenever Nancy gets told to fold towels, that means she goes to Cassidy and solves a letter-matching minigame. I like the letter-matching, it is my favorite minigame. Although, like most of the minigames, I think it shows up too often, and the last few times it appears, it's so difficult, it stops being fun and becomes a major pain. But it's great here the first time around. The challenge is to swap tiles, make matches. If you can't make a match, the tiles won't swap. When you make enough matches for every letter, the puzzle is over, it gets replaced by a riddle. Riddle me this, Nancy Drew. I hang out in the tropics and I'm spelled with S-V-N-I-E. The answer is vines. Nancy looks at the map, and you're challenged to figure out the next destination. It's the jungle room, in this case. I like the riddles, I think they work well. A mean guest named Mrs. Montague is in the jungle room. I don't like her. Her dog, Mr. Mingles, is pretty cute, but it's annoying how Nancy's forced to spend half the game ignoring the mystery in order to chase this mean woman's runaway dog. Mrs. Montague makes Nancy scratch her nose, adjust the temperature, water a plant, read a gossip column, and make tea. Bossy much? I remember the tea making because it's a six-step puzzle, which is unnecessarily complicated. Sort of like making tea in Nancy Drew Danger by Design. I wonder if these games are the reason I don't like drinking tea in real life. Mrs. Montague falls asleep, and Nancy looks for the bomb. The first part is figuring out where the bomb is. The closer your cursor is to the bomb, the louder the beeping noise is. The bomb's in a shower head. When you find the bomb, you get a diffusing puzzle. There's a 5x5 five five grid with pieces that look like pipes. You want to swap the pieces in order to form a complete pathway from the left to the right. If you run out of time, the puzzle restarts. I don't think the game gives players enough time for this challenge, so I usually click outside the game's window in order to pause it, that way I give myself more time. Mrs. Montague orders you to go to the salon to find Mr. Mingles. He got trapped in a dumbwaiter, which is locked by a series of puzzles. I like this chapter. It's mostly riddle-style puzzles, which is great. First, you match related items like tree and leaf, bird and wing, cloud and rain. Each pillar has a mosaic tile, which is hidden by riddles like has a stem but never grows, which of the four items matches the clue? It's a wine glass, and these are good puzzles. I also like the puzzle to mix and match bottles to get a weight of 15 ounces. That's a good math puzzle. The other puzzles in the room are okay. One is an action icon puzzle, where you lift a drain and flip a switch. The other is hanging a jewel from a ceiling and then pulling the jewels in the specified order, which is a puzzle that gets reused in the Zen Zone later on. I like how the salon makes good use of the scenery, both here and the next time Nancy visits. She visits each location at least twice. The waste room is the only place you visit once. I also like how you get to hear the salon clients gossiping. Is it wrong that I find their dialogue more entertaining than everything else in the game? After finding Mr. Mingles, Nancy talks with Mrs. Montague. She learns Helfton, the biochemist, took a sample of the bomb, so Nancy goes to his lab. Helfton is a somewhat funny character. He has cartoony animations, and he does a lot of unnecessary talking in a heavy accent. He forces Nancy to do the Molecule minigame, which is a terrible minigame. The goal is to rotate colored balls so the colors match. 
If you get a match of three, the three balls disappear and are replaced with new ones. The angles on the puzzle are weird because each ball can be rotated into six different positions. That lets you make matches in all directions. The puzzle would be easier and it would be more intuitive if the balls only had three positions, not six. These are three-sided balls. It just makes sense for them to have three positions. I always mess up when rotating the balls because I can't remember if right-clicking or left-clicking is clockwise or counterclockwise. If you mess up the rotations, you'll sometimes make a match you weren't intending, which messes up your solution. The puzzle always takes a long time because you get stuck with a bunch of balls at the bottom of the screen, which don't have any possible matches. You're forced to keep making matches in the desperate hope that you'll get close to the intended area. That happens sometimes with a letter matching puzzle, but it happens all the time with this puzzle. In this round of the puzzle, you have to make 14 different matches. Next time, you have to make 20. It would be an instant improvement if those numbers were cut in half. Or even cut into thirds. I think the designers must have known this minigame was no fun, because players are only forced to do it twice. They're not forced to do it over five times, like word matching and bomb disarming. It's still so bad that only doing it twice doesn't stop it from being the worst puzzle of the game. Helfton says the bomb in the jungle room was a dud, which could not explode. Unless I'm remembering wrong, it doesn't get explained outside of the Mrs. Montague ending. If she's the culprit, she planted the fake bomb because she didn't want to hurt herself. If the culprit's someone else, then there's no explanation, we're just left to assume the culprit messed up on that bomb by accident. Nancy does the letter matching minigame again. This time there are blank tiles. They don't do anything besides take up space and get in your way. The answer to this riddle is white, so the next bomb's in the ivory room. Once again, an uppity guest forces Nancy to do chores instead of finding the bomb. She wants Nancy to do facials, which is another minigame. You want to make the face look like the picture. There are four different colors of mud and items which cover up the eyes, mouth, nose, right side of the face, and bottom half of the face. If something's covered up, it doesn't get mud on it. The puzzle's okay, it's kind of silly looking, but it's a decent challenge. There are plenty of different combinations you can make which keeps things interesting. The game slowly keeps increasing the number of steps you have to take to reach the solution. Towards the end, it's a little too much when you have to do both eyes separately, both sides of the nose separately, along with both sides of the mouth, which is separate from the lower half of the face, which is also split in half. That is too much. Here you do four facials, and the guest leaves. Nancy finds a threatening note for Jasmine Ivy, and she appears momentarily. The bomb's in the sensory deprivation unit, which is locked with four puzzles. I don't like the puzzles in this room. I'm never quite sure what to do. Probably because there are five places to interact with on the pod, and they're all right next to each other. It's very easy to get them confused. You push a button on the wall for a secret cabinet, which has salt and a UV light. They both get used on the pod. Pull open the cabinet for a hose. That goes on the sink first and the pod second. Then you turn the wheels on the pod first and the sink second. So it's, it's the opposite first time and the second time. Inside the pod is the bomb disarming minigame. This time you've got green tiles, which can't be swapped. You have to work around them. Jasmine Ivy comes in. She's an okay character, but I think she's kind of boring. She orders Nancy to go to her room, which has one puzzle. You match words to numbers, like 8 is octopus, 10 is decade, and so on. Solving the puzzle gives you her phone, which shows she's been getting threatening messages, which we already knew. The phone also reveals Jasmine's sister is Ida Brooks from the previous game. I don't think this game did enough with the Ida Brooks angle, probably because they didn't want to spoil the fact that Ida's the culprit. So instead we get, oh no, Jasmine's related to a culprit, but we can't say she's a culprit, so we're going to say Jasmine is related to her sister, who doesn't appear in the game or affect the story at all. Oh no! Next chapter is also super short. Nancy talks to Mr. Blesky, and he tells her to re-examine the lab. That's it. These two chapters easily could have been combined, or even removed. It makes me wonder if they did have longer chapters and cut some of them into smaller pieces just to make the game seem longer. 
hey, we've got 30 chapters. Six of them are like half a minute. In the lab, well, I, I, I'm being unfair. So the game is about the same length as the previous one, right? How long does it? Okay, so it's, it's like two to three hours long, two and a half to three hours long. It's not that short of a game. But I do find it weird that they have super short chapters in what is otherwise a pretty decently length game. Back to the lab. In the lab, Helfton's got a monkey lunchbox. You combine it with a monkey for a note about test tubes. This is a color challenge, so blue and yellow, they make green when you mix them together. That means blue and yellow are in the green spot. You want to sort the six test tubes, you fix a Bunsen burner, use it on the tube for a key, which opens a drawer with a note about Compound X. This is so sinister sounding, Nancy decides to make it right away, and she's going to spend a decent part of the game investigating Compound X. Too bad it's a bomb formula, which explodes and kills her instantly! Ah! <laughs> I'm just kidding. To make Compound X, you need to mix four different ingredients of different sizes and colors, I don't like this, sort of like the deprivation pod challenge. I get confused on the first two steps, because there are too many dishes and colors and ingredients to find and use. But the second half of the challenge is fine. Nancy does the dreaded molecule minigame while she waits. <laughs> Compound X turns into jello. So Mr. Mingles eats it and runs to the furnace room, and so Nancy keeps chasing him, trying to get Chemical X back. I'm sorry, did I call it Chemical Axe? That, that's from the Powerpuff Girls. No, it's, it's Compound Axe. My mistake. So, Mr. Mingles goes to the furnace room, which gives you a bonus challenge. Which is kind of a fun idea. You've got 45 seconds to click on as many items as possible. The items are moving around the screen, popping up in different places in a regular pattern. The more items you get, the more bonus points you get. It's sort of like playing Whack-A-Mole with moving targets are like the snake challenge from the previous game. The problem with the challenge is that you're collecting rats, which is gross. Next time you collect cockroaches. Why can't Nancy collect cute animals, like bunnies and puppies? Once the rats are gone, Nancy finds Mr. Mingles behind a green box. And that's the entire chapter. Again, you've got the rat challenge, and then click on this green box. Nancy gets startled by the creepy janitor, Joanna Brown. Joanna likes rats and spying on people. How pleasant. She grabs Mr. Mingles while Nancy goes to stop the next bomb. This time, the letter matching game has locked tiles, which cannot be swapped. You can only get rid of them by matching with them. This is a good additional challenge. There's also a plain tile, which can be swapped with any tile on the board, as long as it results in a match. That's useful. I like it. The answer to the riddle is scissors, which refers to the salon. Nancy gets another bonus round, where she catches cockroaches. I don't know why the two bonus rounds are put so close together. They should have been spaced out. I'm also not sure why it's called a bonus round, when it is literally the entire chapter. Next, Nancy snoops in Mr. Blesky's office. She takes an eyeball from a painting and an eyeball from under the carpet. Eyeballs. Yeah, they're just eyeballs. She puts them in the human face on the tree-shaped cabinet. This is weird. I'm sorry. It's just so weird to explain it. The cabinet has two puzzles. One has five animals and five clues. You sort the animals according to the clues. With the other puzzle, you need to sort the nine tiles so each row and column has three different colors and three different symbols. I think these challenges are okay. Once you solve the puzzle, you get an accounting sheet, which shows the Redondo is grossly overcharging clients. As in, the $3,000 trip really costs less than $20. Nick is secretly stealing all of the extra money by labeling it as his weekly bonus. Mrs. Montague calls and says, Mr. Mingles is lost again. Joanna's chasing after Mr. Mingles. And that's nice of her. Everyone else in the game would force Nancy to do it instead. Nancy repays Joanna's kindness by going to her room and snooping around. Thanks, Nancy. You're a good friend. Nancy instantly finds a bomb. I find it interesting she does the word puzzle, but she doesn't get the bomb in the salon. But here, she gets the bomb, but doesn't do the word puzzle. Makes me think that maybe these two were originally connected to each other, but they were later split up when chapters got switched around a bit. Nancy uses a broom to knock a crank off a pipe. She uses the crank on the furnace control box to turn it off. The bomb puzzle has only one piece that goes in a straight line from left to right, so 
to get to right hand side of the board you're forced to make a little staircase out of the pieces of that turn we don't really get that many variations of the bomb disarming puzzle i feel like they could have expanded from a five by five grid to a six by six or maybe a seven by seven that's how they could have expanded the puzzle and kept it going made it a bit more difficult instead it's the same basic thing every time unlike the letter matching challenge where they tried to do something different each time Nope, bomb disarming, same each time. Well, after Nancy disarms the bomb, she decides to open Joanna's locked chest. She uses a mop handle as part of a screwdriver to pry open the furnace for a key. The second key needs to be forged. I know Nancy forged a key in Blackmore Manor, but I still think it's weird Nancy's forging a key here. Does Joanna have to make a new key every single time she wants to open the chest? Joanna has a romance novel called Midbreak at Waverly, which is probably about the love triangle between Jacob, Izzy, and Leela. Behind it are rat treats. You use them on the rat cage for an ingot. The mold is hidden under the reclining chair, while the crucible is hidden under the drain. Nancy has to use a towel and water in order to cool the key down. Inside Joanna's chest is an anti-shrine to Jasmine Ivy. It's got a ripped photo of Jasmine and a photo that's been scribbled on. I have no idea why this is so well protected. Silly pictures are not so important, you have to forge a key to get them. With the pictures is an article about Jasmine getting a secret boyfriend. Nancy must be desperate for love drama because she goes straight to Jasmine's room. Jasmine's phone is lost again, you have to find all eight pieces of her business card. They're scattered throughout the room, five of them are out in the open. You use action icons and salad tongs to get the other three. Nancy uses tape to put the pieces together in a jigsaw puzzle. She calls the phone, which is by the TV. The TV remote is broken. You need to fix it with batteries from Jasmine's bathrobe. I don't know why her bathrobe has batteries in it. Nancy uses Jasmine's cell phone to read an email on Jasmine's computer, which is kind of silly. Nancy could just use the phone to read an email. It'd be a lot easier. The email is from Jasmine's agent, Simone Mueller who's from Nancy Drew, the final scene. It's a fun little reference to a previous game. The email says Jasmine should totally play up the threatening messages for publicity, which is definitely something Simone would say. Jasmine comes in and talks to Nancy for a bit. Then Mr. Blesky calls Nancy. He tells her to go to the reception area, where he explains she has to work the phones. Even though Mr. Blesky should be here, we don't see him. We see a generic phone intercom picture where his face would normally go. This made me realize there are about five chapters which end or begin with Nancy talking on the phone. I think that was done on purpose so they wouldn't have to animate as many conversations. I like the phone minigame. It's basically a challenge to sort things, combined with riddles because you have to figure out what the clients are saying. It's not that tough. I want to talk to your boss, well that's the manager's room. I want a specialist in mud, well that's the jungle room. I want the room with the biggest windows. Oh my gosh, I have no idea what room that is, I'm sorry. Kind of wish we did the phone mini game more than once. Once you're finished, Nancy gets a call from a reporter who's pretending to be a doctor to get gossip about Jasmine Ivy. Jasmine herself calls saying, I just had to hear your voice say something. Something exciting. Whoa! She's upset to hear Cassidy is gone. We never do learn where he went, did we? The magazine on the table here is all about destroying the rich, which seems like a weird magazine to leave lying around in a spa for the extremely rich. The magazine matches the bomb from two chapters ago. Nancy can't check the name on the magazine because Mr. Mingles hid the key to the recycling bin. Nancy has to open a drawer and push the button to turn the water fountain off, but oh no, Nancy can't touch wet rocks with her hands! So she puts pens in a drawer to use the pen container as a scoop to move the rocks aside. She combines a harp string with a paper clip to make a fishing line so she can fish the key out. The recycling bin reveals the magazine belongs to Cassidy. Cassidy arrives and he disavows everything. He says he gets the magazine by accident, and the culprit must have stolen a piece to frame him. Mr. Blesky interrupts and sends Nancy to the jungle room to get Mr. Mingles. This is a fun challenge. It's way better than picking up rats and cockroaches. 
The screen is covered with bubbles. You want to move your cursor around to pop the bubbles. You need to find and click on Mr. Mingles three times. Nancy reports to Mr. Blesky. It turns out he already knows about Compound X. So that entire investigation was a dead end. Great. Nancy is sent to the salon where she does five facials. She has a puzzle to fix the vacuum. She uses a hook on the skylight that opens the vents. You put the hair from the vents in a trash can. Three of the vents have papers. They tell you the order in which you push buttons to run the vacuum. The vacuum has two screws, which screws me up. Because I always try to use the tweezers on the wrong screw. The other screw needs a nail file, and you use glue on the fan blades that fixes the vacuum. Nancy hears two strangers mention a ticking noise in the Zen Zone. The woman who runs this room is named Val. She forces you to do four facials on her. That's the last facial challenge. Val complains about her co-workers, and she hides in the corner for the rest of the chapter. The bomb's in a cabinet. Nancy finds five knobs and puts them in the correct holes. This is followed by a puzzle where she has to make pairs of animals based on the clues. Like the animal who can't sit down is the snake. We've seen a lot of riddles like that. They're in the entire game. Whoever wrote the riddle puzzles did a good job. I think most of them are good outside of the final puzzle. That one is just a flaming dumpster fire, but we'll get to that later. After you disarm the bomb, Nancy finds a note from Jasmine to Cassidy. Why was that hidden in a cabinet in the Zen Zone? Nancy goes to the garden, which is a large maze. I get the sense nobody likes this maze, and I can understand why. The navigation is too tough, but most of the pathways are curved, so you constantly have to readjust the direction you're going. You can't see the whole maze at once, so you head into a lot of unexpected dead ends. And a lot of those dead ends should not exist. Like, there's a small patch of grass between the dead end and the next pathway. In real life, Nancy could step over that patch of grass easily. But the game forces you to take a minute-long detour to get around it. Nancy has to find four guests and lead them to the white umbrellas. A little arrow appears, pointing you in the direction of the umbrellas, which is an okay challenge. After that, Nancy has to sneak up on Jasmine and Cassidy, who are on the right-hand side. They're having a deliberately vague conversation, almost like they know Nancy's spying on them, and they want to make it impossible for her to understand anything. We see their heads from behind. I'm sure this was done to save on animation, because it's way easier to animate a character when their face is hidden. The two of them bob their heads slightly whenever they talk. That's, that's the animation, just slight head bob. Way easier than having to move their mouth and eyes and eyelids and everything? Definitely. This talking animation is looped until the conversation is over, so they just do the same head bobs over and over and over again. Nancy returns to the reception area, which was just blown up. Why did the culprit not leave a warning for this bomb? Or the one in the Zen Zone, you ask? I don't know! This isn't explained! A furious Mr. Blesky chews Nancy out. He refuses to call the police. He leaves, and Nancy finds a puzzle board which says there's a second bomb nearby. The riddle is you need to be green. The answer is a seven-letter word with R and C. The answer is clearly recycle. I don't know why Nancy doesn't solve it right away. She could also use her bomb detector to find the bomb right away. Just saying. Nancy has to get all five tiles so she can solve the puzzle. Use a towel to get one stock tile, use a screwdriver to get two others, use a branch to get the tile that's high up, open the cabinet, feed the fish, then use a fishnet to get the last tile. Behind this bomb is a threatening message for Nancy. She ignores it and focuses on an angry letter from Helfton. He wants more recognition for the products he created. Nancy goes to the lab, where she decides to make the animals happy. I like how they're all animals from other Nancy Drew games. Each animal needs some kind of treatment and some kind of food, except Casper the Squirrel from Waverly Academy. He just gets fed because his treatment is getting a pair of tiny sunglasses. For the cat, you put water in a flask and use it on the gray powder. For the monkey, use a rolling pin on the aloe for aloe gel. For Iggy the iguana, you heat up tea with a Bunsen burner, then put it in an ice cooler. Once all the animals are taken care of, you get a four-piece jigsaw puzzle, it's a picture of the spa that Helfton hopes to open. Helfton enters with Mrs. Montague. He begs her to give him over half a million dollars to fund the spa. 
Again, we only see the characters from behind, and their animations are played on loop. Yes, he goes back to Nick. And this is the pivotal chapter of the game. Chapter 22 of 30. Nancy names her top suspect. Whoever you pick here is revealed as the culprit at the end of the game. I don't think most players realize this. It's only obvious if you replay the game and pick a different person as the culprit. There's nothing to indicate that you are choosing the ending here. It seems like Nancy is randomly guessing. I wish the game had done something to indicate this decision is of great importance. Instead, it comes across as a weird, short chapter. But there's more. There are five places to visit, but there's only four chapters. So, when you pick someone as a culprit, you're also picking which room you will not explore. Mr. Blesky and Cassidy both ignore the laboratory. Helfton ignores the ivory room. Mrs. Montague ignores the waste room. Jasmine ignores the zen zone. And Joanna ignores the guest room. Two of the places you explore will have bombs. It's weird that the final third of the game does not have any mini-games outside of the bomb challenge. The facial mini-games and the others are finished. Why isn't this one? The last two iterations of the letter matching challenge are the worst ones, as I indicated earlier. The number of lock tiles greatly increases, and you're given bomb tiles. You have to match them quickly, but most of the time, you can't match them, and the entire board becomes locked up because there aren't any good moves. Luckily, they introduce a starburst power-up, which clears all the locks and bombs from the board. That helps, but only a little. As I said, you have to search five rooms. Each room has a piece of evidence about one of the suspects. The evidence makes the suspect look guilty, except for the culprit. Their piece of evidence makes them look innocent. That's the game's way of trying to trick you. Mr. Blesky and Cassidy both share a piece of evidence. It's like Mr. Blesky was originally going to have his own challenge, but they didn't finish it in time, so they slapped his evidence onto Cassidy's challenge and hoped nobody noticed. In the guest room, Nancy has to find Jasmine's diary. You need to feed the octopus for a key, which is a strange but satisfying puzzle. And you need to match leaves for another key. In the ivory room, Nancy finds evidence about Mrs. Montague. Her handbag and Mr. Mingles both get caught in a large pneumatic tube. This is a weird challenge. You have to activate a scary looking laser machine, then find a three part password, then repair the machine to find the lever to the tube. That saves Mr. Mingles. In the laboratory, you have to make gas to power the laser, which is locked with questions about the animals. That gives you a cabinet key. In the Zen Zone, you have to solve the puzzle of touching lanterns in the sky to get lots of marbles. Use the marbles on the display, where you follow the clues to sort them based on color, material, direction, and sense. In the waste room, you run wet towels on the dryer to create steam to reveal the password for the autoclave. The 12 papers in the autoclave spread out all over the room. Joanna shows up in person at this point, so it's the only time you actually talk to a character during this segment. Joanna talks about her brother Elwood, she wants revenge on the person who rejected his movie script. Chapter 25 always takes place in the garden maze. Nancy needs to chase after Mr. Mingles. Occasionally, he stops and buries a paper. You want to collect all five papers and put them together in a jigsaw puzzle. The paper is always a piece of evidence for the one room out of the five that you do not visit. In Chapter 28, Nancy returns to the reception area for the end of the game. Mr. Mingles somehow got himself locked in the safe. Mr. Mingles is cute, but he gets into more deadly situations than Nancy. It's amazing he's still alive. To unlock the safe, you need the four-part combination. These are all number riddles. Like the harmonica says, two, good, two, play, four, ever. So it's numbers two, two, four. Find all the numbers to open the safe. All the suspects show up here, and they talk for a while about their various storylines. It's revealed Cassidy is secretly dating Jasmine Ivy. Joanna has been sending Jasmine threats in revenge for what happened to Joanna's brother. Mrs. Montague is upset at Mr. Mingles' botched spinal manipulation, and Helfton thinks the bombs give him an excuse to get out of his contract. The bomb detector goes off. Nancy finds a map that the culprit dropped. It shows there's a secret bomb shelter nearby. There are three entryways, 
but Nancy decides to ignore two of them and only focus on the one in the garden. That's a terrible decision on her part because the garden puzzle is bad. You have to match the clues to the statues. And this is what I was talking about. It's the terrible puzzle at the end of the game with riddles which aren't good. For example, the first clue is he wrote about Charbidus' whirlpool. Do you know who that is? Maybe not. If you're not familiar with Greek mythology, then solving this puzzle is impossible. You're basically forced to guess at random until you find the correct statue. There's nothing in the game which gives you the solution to the puzzle. You just have to automatically know the solution. I was a Greek and Latin major in college, and even I don't know some of this stuff. I don't know who Hipparchus is. I know Hippocrates is a doctor, but I don't know why his symbol is a scale. Euclid and Pythagoras, they both taught geometry. So it's kind of unfair for the puzzle to say one's got students, but the other dealt with angles. They're both geometry teachers. Angles and students apply equally to both of them. There are some obscure clues, like Artemis's animal is a hound, while Hermes' symbol is a liar. Okay, those are correct. But if you've played Nancy Drew Labyrinth of Lies, you know those aren't the main items associated with those gods. Artemis's main symbol is a deer, while Hermes is winged sandals. And in part two of the puzzle, Hermes does have winged sandals, so why did they switch it for this version? I, I don't know. Yeah, there's a part two. Oh my gosh. This first part is bad enough. It's just not an enjoyable puzzle at all. You have to do a lot of wandering around, unless you've memorized where all the statues are, and why would you have that memorized? Wandering around the maze is still no fun. It wasn't fun earlier. It's not fun here. In fact, it's even less fun here than it was earlier. It's so bad, the puzzle would probably be disliked, even if the puzzle was find the 12 months of the year and not solve obscure mythology riddles. Once you finish with a statue, sparkles appear around it. That is useful. The puzzle's not over yet. There's a part two, because once you get to 12 statues, you have to match the 12 symbols to the 12 names. These are riddles like the ones we saw earlier, and I wish the riddles appeared on screen here. To see the riddles, you have to flip through Nancy's journal, and you have to flip through the pages. Why couldn't they fit all 12 riddles on a single screen? That would have been so much better. The game makes it difficult with riddles that could fit multiple people. Does flying refer to the owl or the winged sandals? Does the school refer to fish or students? Does the geometry clue refer to Pythagoras or Euclid? And again, it's hard to solve these riddles unless you know about Greek mythology in advance. I have to imagine many players were just completely stumped by this puzzle. I appreciate that they tried to have a big, complicated puzzle for the end of the game. It's just not a good puzzle, and it makes the game end on a sour note. When you're done with the puzzle, Nancy finds the bomber's hideout, where you have to do more matching puzzles. I wish the segment had been cut for the game. Nancy should have discovered the culprit right away after she opens the door. Nancy has to put two wires together and use the soldering gun on them to fix the lights. She has to cut a piece of wire, then put tape on it to get a phonograph crank from the fan. The phonograph reveals a purple light bulb. Use the light bulb on the lights to get post-it notes. You want to rearrange them to spell out two sentences. That gives you the numbers to the culprit's safe. Inside is the culprit's journal. The culprit appears at this point, and they set off a massive bomb, one that's big enough to destroy the entire spa. The culprit escapes while Nancy does the final bomb disarming puzzle. That brings an end to the game. Nancy reads the letter about what happened next, complete with hand-drawn pictures of the culprit being arrested. In half of the endings, the culprit is surprised to see Nancy, which makes no sense. The bomb didn't go off. Clearly, she's still alive. In all of the endings, Nancy ends by saying the Redondo now has lots of clients. She repeats the previous game's joke about tabloid spelling her name right. That joke wasn't funny enough to be worth bringing back, in my opinion. And now you just confused all the players who did not play the first game, and they don't know the setup to the joke. There's also a preview of the third game, which never got made. Which is kind of a shame, it looks neat. So that's resorting to danger. It's not that bad, although it could use some work. The final maze puzzle was awful, and the molecule puzzle was too. Being able to pick the culprit was neat, although you'd never know that was a feature, unless you liked the game enough to replay it. 
I will rate this one point higher than the first game because it's a noticeable improvement, although I don't think they made enough improvements to save the series from cancellation. I pointed out places where they cut corners on animation and such. I feel like they could have used a month or two to give this game an extra coat of polish, maybe rearrange some of the chapters or expand them. Those minute-long chapters have to be longer chapters which were cut short because they didn't have enough time to finish them, right? I give Nancy Drew Dossier number 2, Resorting to Danger, a 7 out of 10. Wow, so I just complained about the game for 40 minutes? Yeah, I think this was an overly complaining review. I do like the game, I thought it was better than the first one. Like I said, I, I would recommend this one over the first one, but I still have lots of complaints about it. I noticed far more problems with the game when I was examining the game in minute detail for this review. Those are problems I didn't notice when I was playing the game casually for fun.